What's up guys, this is Valentina with Bigger Creations here with a new video for you. Uh, today we're gonna be talking a little bit about my studio setup. I've gotten a lot of questions and a lot of requests to just show you guys what equipment I'm using. You guys, we are past 3,500 subscribers. Thank you so much. Seriously, if you, the person that are watching right now, subscribe to my channel, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's really helping me get catch some momentum and keep going on this channel. I definitely wanna make sure that I'm helping other because that was the purpose you know trying to just pay it forward about things that I've learned if you haven't subscribed please do if you like my stuff go ahead and subscribe put a couple comments I'd love to hear what you guys think about what I'm making and um, before we jump into it I just do want to say it's not about the equipment sometimes it just takes years to realize that it's not about the equipment it's about who's using the equipment it's the same thing like a photographer a photographer could take a really great picture with a really old and cheap non-HD camera. <laughs> so it's really more around the artist and I'm, I'm not claiming to be the best artist at all. In fact, I'm learning a lot just in doing these videos, but I'm definitely not a professional and I just do this for fun because I love it. And I think it comes through in the videos that I'm making. You know, I just really enjoy doing it. So it's not about the equipment. So don't focus on the equipment. Don't feel like if you're starting out and you wanna be where I'm at, like, don't feel like you need to go out and purchase everything that I have just so that you can be at my level. I remember thinking about that when I started watching videos and I was like, man, they've got all these nice condenser microphones and like, I just have this USB interface one. And uh, you know, I felt like I needed to get the same thing that everybody else was getting on YouTube in order to get the same quality. And that's not the case. So I think I've beat the horse dead enough. Um, but yeah, let's talk a little bit about the equipment I have. But the first piece of equipment that I have are M Audio BX5s. Uh, those are the studio monitors that I use. I really like them and I particular I specifically chose them one because they were in my price range and then two because they had a, a decent bass response without having to purchase a subwoofer. Um, and I still feel like I have trouble monitoring my lower end frequencies. Uh, just in the way I mix things and because I'm learning. But these monitors, I got them specifically because they have a really decent uh, low frequency response so that I can really listen to the beat that I make without having to go and buy a sub. As far as my computer, I use an iMac. It's a 27 inch, I love it. So I've got the highest processor on the iMac um, and then I've got 32 gigs of RAM. Other than that, everything else is stock with whatever it came with. As far as the interface that I'm using to actually record into with my microphone or my guitar, as you can see my guitar is back here, um, it's a Focusrite interface um, and I'll put a link to it in the description so you guys can get the specs on it. It's probably one of the cheaper interfaces out there but very decent in the amount of inputs that it has and the quality of the interface. So I would definitely recommend it, especially if you're, um, you know, you want really good quality, but are kind of on a budget. So that's definitely what I would go with. As far as my microphone, I love this baby. This thing is a Rode NT1A. I think it's like 250 bucks or something like that. Comes with this nice kit shock mount um, and pop filter with the logo on it so that you look fancy. But yeah, it's a standard XLR cable input um, and I just put it on a regular mic stand. And this thing is just, it's great quality, honestly. It's one of the best that you can get out there for that price range and I would definitely recommend it. But don't feel like you need to get this. I, I have a lot of comments around like, man, your vocals are so great. Um, and some people may be thinking it's the microphone I use. It's really not. Um, I had a previous microphone that was just the like $100, M audio um, USB interface, like beginner kind of podcast microphone. It was still a condenser mic, so it had the same shape and same um, pickup pattern. It was still a cardioid, but it was great quality. Um, I found myself recording great quality vocals without this microphone. So don't feel like you need to purchase something like this to get good audio. Um, it's also a lot about just mic placement can make such a difference in the quality of your of your vocals. But you know, if it's in your price range, this baby is amazing. I love it. I love it a lot. It is my baby. Yeah, let's see. Wall treatment. Um, honestly, I kind of just have the wall treatment up there for fun because it looks cool. 
you know, and I have it all behind my, my recording area just because I heard and doing some research that uh, the best thing you can do is reduce the amount of reflections from the closest surface to you from where you're recording your vocals. And oftentimes I find myself recording my vocals just right here in front of my desk. The first surface that's receiving reflections that could potentially come back into the microphone is right behind my speakers and where my microphone is. So that's why I have all this padding here. This was really cheap. I'll put a link to some of that stuff on Amazon. Um, but honestly, it's not necessary. I was recording great quality vocals before I even had any of this. So most of this for me in this space that I'm in is, is not really necessary. It's just more for show. I mean, I've got carpet floor um, and I've got furniture in this room, so I don't have to worry about a lot of reflections. You can still get some great quality audio. Okay, the keyboard that I'm using, the MIDI controller that I'm using is actually what it's called, but it's um, an M Audio 61 key station. And this thing, when I bought it, it was like 80 bucks. So I'm sure it's probably like 60 or something now because it's been several years. Or maybe not, maybe it's the same price. I don't know, I'll put a link to it in the description. But um, that's really all you need. I mean, you can get away with something smaller. You don't need a keyboard that that's, that is that big. But for me personally, that I actually play the piano, I enjoy being able to at least play two and a half, two octaves, two and a half octaves. Um, so anything smaller than that would feel limiting to me, but I'd still be able to create the same things. Um, just would probably take a little bit more work in post when I'm trying to actually add in MIDI notes. I'd probably have to record, you know, the bass hand and the normal hand um, separately. But like I said, that's the thing about gear. It, all it really does is create convenience for you, um, make some processes simpler um, and easier to go through not necessarily add quality to what you're doing. So that's why I say it's not about the equipment, it's about the artist behind it, so, and how much work you're willing to put towards things. That's pretty much it, guys. This is, that's it. I mean, I've got my computer, I've got my MIDI controller, I've got the Focusrite interface where I can um, plug everything into. So I have my mic with the XLR cable running into the Focusrite. The Focusrite connects via USB into the computer. Um, and that's pretty much it. I can plug my guitar into there if I want to. Um, it has a headphone jack so I can control the audio that goes to the monitors as well as the audio that goes to my headphones, um, which is super useful to have separate controls for that. I also got a, a sustained foot pedal with my M Audio and I'll just put a link to it in the description. But like I said, because I enjoy playing piano, I, I'm used to playing a real piano and so I like having the pedal. Um, but that's, that's, you can add a sustained pedal, you know, in the way you edit things in Logic. So, I mean, it's not really necessary, but I enjoy having it there and I use it a lot of times. I got a question about what kind of camera I use. So, first of all, um, I went to film school and so I have a camera. I have a, a nice camera. It's a Canon 5D Mark II. It's a little bit outdated, but it's a fantastic camera. And the videos I've been shooting, I'm just shooting them with the, the kit lens, the 24 to 105. Um, and honestly, you don't need something like this. Like this, this is, um, this camera can get you some cinematic stuff if you know how to use it right. But you don't need something like this. Right now I'm recording actually on a brand new camera, which I'm super uh, fangirling about. But um, it shoots in 4K, it's a Sony A7S II. And um, that is a great camera and I really enjoy that it has autofocus because then when I film myself like this, um, I don't have to worry about how far I am. It'll just track me. So I really enjoy that feature, but there's a lot of inexpensive point and shoot cameras that can do the autofocus if you're doing something like this. If you wanna do similar YouTube videos, you don't even need autofocus. If you get just a simple point and shoot or even just your iPhone, put it on a tripod and film yourself, like that works just as great. The key with video and you know images is just the composition. Um, and so think about where you place your camera, think about what you can see. A lot of it is just set design, to be honest. Um, sometimes if you just declutter your space, your video, man, my phone is blowing up, sorry. <laughs> um, your video, if you declutter your space, sometimes your video will look 10 times better than if you just have a couple of things lying out on your desk. Um, so keep in mind, there's a lot of components to making a video look good. It's not just the camera quality, though this camera is a beast and I love it. Oh, my audio, I've just been... 
Uh, my audio, I just use the H4N Zoom, which is why you can hear the difference when I'm up close like this. Um, but I just, it's a great recorder. Jeez, my phone is blowing up, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just getting, um, it's a great recorder. You can plug things in right into it. Um, and it also has these two microphones on it so it's got stereo recording on board without having to have an external microphone but if for example i wanted to go out somewhere and record a video outside i can actually directly plug in my um guitar and then an external microphone or just use the stereo mics which are great um and yeah obviously i do some post processing on the on the audio that i record on this thing you guys that's all my equipment i hope you guys um enjoy it if you have any additional questions something that i didn't touch on please let me know. So I have a ton of video suggestions, a ton of videos in the works that are going to come soon. Um, so I promise you, I do see all the comments that you guys put on there about, you know, suggestions on things you want to see, questions you ask me. So pretty soon I'll have a Q&A, um, aside from the studio tour, and then uh, just a bunch of cool videos coming up soon. So stay tuned and keep making beats.